Hi, my name's Jordan, and today we're going to be looking at spray booths. Uh, we're going to be looking at the spray booth filters, we're going to be going over the booth walls, uh, we're going to be looking at the controls and how to operate a spray booth, and we're also going to be doing a smoke test clearance time. Uh, we'll go into more detail throughout the video. Um, I hope you enjoy it. If you've got any recommendations or you want me to do any videos on anything, please just give me a shout and I'm sure we can sort something out. Enjoy. So I've just lifted up the uh, grids in the booth here just to show you the floor filters. Um, these ones are green on top um, and these ones are also made out of fiberglass. Now if we just take a little bit off here, you can actually see that the, the really fine glass particles in these filters. So it's definitely a good idea to make sure you're wearing latex gloves or nitrile um, along with the overalls as well because you don't want this getting in clothing or onto your skin because it will get really irritating after a while. So we've got the top layer which is fiberglass and we've also got a layer underneath um, which helps further filter out that spray when we're spraying. So we've just looked at our floor filters. Now if you can see we've also got these roof filters as well. Now you've got to make sure you change these every so often as well otherwise that can also further affect your pressures in your booth. We'll also be looking at pressures in a minute on the uh, booth. So while we're in here, now's probably a good time just to have a look at the booth walls. So here are our booth walls. Um, we actually spray these with a tack coat. So as you can see, it's very tacky. Now we spray this on the walls because it helps eliminate any dust or dirt or flies. And it's basically aiming at keeping our jobs clean. So with this bagging, you can, you can see how sticky these walls are. Um, you might see some body shops have this bagging on the walls. Now, they do put this on because it's quicker, it keeps the booth walls clean, um, and when they're in a mainstream shop, you know, we've not got time to start cleaning down the booth walls and spraying them again. Um, putting this on the walls is okay, however, there's no tacky finish on this, so it's not going to stop any dirt or flies going into our panels. Um, so, with this method, you're going to get a bit of dirt or flies or dust in your panels. With them being tack coated like this, you know, it's going to keep your jobs cleaner and, you know, all you have to do is get a jet wash in here, jet wash it all down and apply some new tack coat. So we're just going to take a look at the um, spray booth control panel on here. Um, I'm going to run through the controls first and what they do. So we've got the burner lockout reset. We've got the burner on off switch, we've got the booth lighting, we've got the mixing room lighting, we've got the spray on button, we've got a flash off button, stove, the stop button, we've also got a reset, we've got the flash off fans for the left side and the right side of the booth, we've got the mixing room extraction as well on here, we've got the emergency stop button, we've got the flash off timer, a stove timer, We've also got the spray and bake heat settings controls, and we've also got the magna helic gauge. So we'll just take a look at the magna helic gauge, and basically this shows you where we're at with the booth pressures. So we've got a positive and negative pressure on here, and basically you want this pressure to be around minus 10. That's suitable for a spray booth. We don't want it in the positive, because when it's positive, the booth doors are going to blow open and we're also going to get fumes from the spraying going into the workshop, which is what we don't want. So the pressure in the magma helic gauge is measured in pascals as well. Um, if the booth pressure is positive and the doors are blowing open, if you're trying to find out what the fault of that is, that could mean that the spray booth filters need changing. If the spray booth pressure is negative, that means that the booth is basically sucking more air than it is blowing into that booth. So that might be a good time for you to change your roof filters as well. So when we're operating the flash off, you're going to turn that on and it turns on the cones inside. Now you can turn on either the left side or right side depending on what job you're using. Um, and you've also got your timer, so this will be a good time to put your job on flash off, set your timer to five minutes, let it flash off, and then when you come back, it'll automatically click back onto the spray option, and then you can carry on spraying. If for whatever reason the job's ready, 
and it's still on flash off mode, you just turn the timer around, it clicks the flash off off, and then you're ready to spray again. So I've got the smoke machine all set up ready, and we're gonna start doing our smoke test clearance time. Um, if you have got a body shop and you are wanting to do smoke test clearance times to make sure your booth's working properly, um, it would be a good idea to get a, a middle range smoke machine because if you go buying cheap ones for 20, 30 quid, um, it takes ages to fill the booth up um, and the brake after a couple of uses. So I've gone for this Beams um, S1200 Mark II. Um, it pushes out some smoke quite fast um, and we're not going to be messing about with it, it's going to get the job done nice and quick. So I'm not going to bore you to death by waiting for the booth to fill up with smoke. I'm going to get it all filled up and we'll take it from there. Right, so we've got the booth filled up with smoke and we're going to turn it on and we're going to do the extraction time and we're going to time it to see how long it takes for all the smoke to go. Right, so you can see it's starting to clear up quite fast now and we're timing it to make sure we've got a proper time on the booth. Hopefully, you'll start seeing it clearing. looking for at this point is all the smoke to disappear so you need to look in the top corners look at the lights and wait to see there's no smoke at all in the booth and then that's when you can stop your timer You might not be able to see it on camera, but you can still see some smoke. And we're probably about there. So, if we look at the time. So, as you can see there on timer, it's actually made it at 1 minute 23 seconds. So, what we're going to do now is log this down on our piece of paper down there and we'll keep a log of the spray booth test clearance times and then obviously we'll do another one next time we come to service the booth. So the last thing we're going to be looking at in this spray booth is the cones and the bulbs um, at the top of the booth. So these cones, we've actually got these running down the whole booth um, and these are for the flash off what we spoke about earlier. Um, all you have to do is just direct them to the job, whichever you've got in the booth and where it is, you might want to point them to it. And the last thing is the lighting. If you've probably noticed in here, it's a very bright white light. And this is because we're using daylight bulbs in this booth. So in other alternative booths, there might be a cheaper halogen light bulb in those booths, which don't give you that true color. And after all, in a booth, when it's white, you're going to want that true colour to help you with your jobs when you're painting and your colour matching. So that's probably about it for the spray booths. Um, I've got a few pictures coming up in a minute of some spray booth faults. Um, hopefully you might find those interesting, you might not know. Um, some of you might already know them already. So if you're not already, we've got the YouTube channel Repair and Refinish, we've got the Facebook Repair and Refinish, and we are working on a website which will be coming very shortly. So thank you very much. <laughs>